Thank you very much for having me. It's a real pleasure to be here because I know that the Tea Party is a organization that was organically grown and that believes very strongly in freedom and the rule of law. And that's what I believe in. I think that's the I think freedom under the rule of law is the most important value that we can have in our political system. And I'm very, very disappointed in what's happened with the Democratic and Republican parties. I don't think there's any question that if we continue voting for Democrats and Republicans, we're going to get the same thing over and over again, which is bigger government, less rule of law, more corporate interests, less serving the people. So I, I've come here to ask for your vote, and I'd like to tell you why I think I deserve your vote. First of all, uh, I, I missed exactly what was said in the introduction of me, so I'll assume that you've got the, the basic bullet points, so I won't, I won't go over that again. But I think that I'm uniquely positioned to meet the challenges that Virginia is going to face, that it currently faces and that it's going to face over the next generation. We need to start building a Virginia that is open-minded and open for business. We need somebody who understands technology, who understands economics, the person who is most able to defend constitutional principles, and somebody who is serious about saying no to special interests. Somebody who is willing to say no to regulations that protect private profits rather than the public interest, willing to say no on tax exemptions and to make tough decisions about getting rid of the income tax or vastly reducing it, about reforming property tax laws, having uh, uh, constitutional limits on the growth of property taxes and things like that. These are the things that you cannot trust the Republican Party anymore. Some might say you never could, but, uh, but the fact of the matter is we need to start doing something different. And over the course of this campaign, I've only been in the I've only been in the race for seven weeks. I got on the ballot. It was very difficult to go on the ballot as a third party candidate, but I did it. And in seven weeks, I have gone. I, I've traveled 8,500 miles. I've added 8,500 miles onto my van, my van's mileage, just meeting people. And I will tell you, everywhere I go, people are so happy to find out that they have a third party candidate, because the two party, the two major parties, have have nominated people who are wrong for Virginia and extreme. Neither of them is going to defend freedom across the board. I believe in both economic freedom and personal liberty. You can't have one without the other. And you need to have somebody who's principled and going to be objective and neutral in applying the law to various people. If we, if we go through the Bill of Rights, we can see who's best on all, uh, on each of the rights, and I think that I will leave the other candidates in the dust. On the Second Amendment, you, you mentioned the gun shows. I was just, if you go to the BCDL's website, you can find out that I was rated very pro-gun. The other two candidates, one of them was so-so, and the other didn't do the uh, BCDL survey. So I'm by far the best candidate on gun rights, on free speech. I'm a very strong advocate for free speech. Fourth Amendment rights. You will not find a better candidate, and it's only the Libertarian Party that you can trust with your privacy rights and pushing back against the IRS and state attorney generals who politicize their office to go after climate scientists that they don't agree with. So it's very important that we have substantive freedoms, but that we also have neutral administration of the rule of law. So those are, the two, those are the two things that I care about. In everything I talk about, you will hear me talking about open and competitive markets. And how do you do that? You have to have freedom under the rule of law. What does that mean? You don't use regulatory barriers to entry to protect your industry. You don't have uh, tax laws that benefit big corporations. You don't have regulations that Make it harder to do business if you're, a, if you're a lonely entrepreneur or a small business. If you look at the certificates of public need, you know, a lot of people push back against the federal government on health care, and rightfully so. But we also need someone who recognizes that we shoot ourselves in the foot here in Virginia. 
by the regulations that we have in the healthcare industry. And we have to look at occupational licensure laws. I'm the only person talking about that. But we have to talk, look also at certificates of public need. If my sister, who's a radiologist, wants to open a new service, spend a lot of money buying an MRI machine and the technicians to run it, she has to go to the State Board of Health to, to, to get a certificate of public need. They will be petitioned by her competitors to keep her out of the market. That's not an open market. That's not a competitive market. And that allows market incumbents to protect their profits. All of these things, there are so many regulations like this. Tesla, the motor car company, that's doing electric cars. They have a showroom in Tyson's Corner, but they can't sell cars there. Why is that? Because a regulation that requires a middleman. A lot of uh, cities have taxi cab regulations that keep, place, that, get, that keep innovative companies like Uber out. A lot of cities are trying to, uh, or, or a lot of hotel companies are trying to put Airbnb out of business. These are the kinds of innovative companies that are going to change the way we do business, that are going to employ more people, and we need to have an open and competitive market to absorb job losses. Right now we have high unemployment everywhere except North Virginia, where all the lawyers work and lobbyists. We need to have a flexible market that can see idle resources, bring in private capital, and create new jobs to move people into declining industries, from declining into industries into rising ones. But we can't have that when we have um, protectionist legislation, protectionist regulation, protectionist taxation, or when we have laws that, that tell you how to live your private lives. And that's one, of the, that's one of the worst things that people, that the Republican Party has done is they've made a hard right turn on social issues that turns people off. Entrepreneurs from the Silicon Valley, educated people who come back here, who want to start jobs, don't like having to live under a government that thinks that sodomy, for example, is the right, is, is under the purview of the state. The GOP nominee wants to federalize the definition of marriage. I thought, I thought we were supposed to be uh, advocates for federalism. There, there's, a lot of, there's a lot of ways in which both the Democrats and the Republicans cannot be trusted on any issue that involves the Constitution. There's a lot of hypocrisy, and there's a lot of, there's a lot of distrust, and, or there should be. And so now is the time. In, in this election, we have the perfect opportunity to invest in the future of this state and change the way we do business in this state, and we can influence national politics as well. We need somebody in the governor's office who understands economics, who can go to Washington, who can go on the talk shows, who can discuss with bureaucrats and legislators and economists how to do health care properly. And I'm the only person who understands that. I'm the only person who knows health care policy or health care economics. I'm the only person who understands technology and how to use technology to reduce the cost of government. I'm the only person who's talking about issues like public pensions and universal school choice and drug reform. These are issues, if, if you cannot talk about budget reform without talking about the waste on enforcement and incarceration. But even more important than that, the cost of the drug war is in lost lives, lost livelihoods, and the economic activity that is lost when we criminalize behavior like the simple possession of marijuana. We make people unemployable by giving them criminal records, take them out of the home, so kids grow up without fathers, often. That's a huge drain on our economy, and that act also leads to dependency on, on public assistance. 
There's also the, the entire police militarization issue traces back to the drug war. A lot of the tactics that we don't like of spying on Americans, you can trace that back to the things that, that law enforcement wanted with the drug war. The loss of search and, search and seizure protections, that comes from the drug war. Abuse of civil asset forfeiture, that comes from the drug war. And all these things, the Republicans and Democrats are complicit on. And the only party that you can trust is the Libertarian Party. So, that's everything, every issue you hear me talk about, I will be consistent on, I will talk about freedom, the rule of law, and the importance of having an open society, a Virginia that is open-minded and open for business. That's what government is supposed to do, to protect our rights and not a whole lot more. Now, on every issue, I understand how to re reform the way we do public policy in a way that improves outcomes, whether it's health care healthcare outcomes, education outcomes, better transportation infrastructure, all at less cost. And that's the most important thing, is that if we want government to be doing something, it should be done in accordance with the Constitution, with as little drain on public finances and taxpayers as possible. So I'll leave you with that, but I'll, I'll uh, be, I'm happy to answer questions. What is your personal work background? Have you run something, or what are these questions? Yes, the, the question is, what is my personal, my professional background? Have I run things? Um, I have had uh, managerial experience in the form of running a company. I started a uh, mobile phone app development company, but I've also, as a lawyer, I was, uh, I managed teams of contract attorneys and cases, litigation cases. Um, uh, so, but the important thing to realize is that the governor's role is not one of, it's not the same as being a CEO, it's not the same as being a day-to-day -day manager of departments. That's what the people you appoint do. The, the important thing to realize is, is management of business is very different from management of government because the most important thing you can know, the most important principle you have as a governor is understanding that understanding the limits of your position, understanding the limits of government power, and everything you have to do is about, has to be under the rule of law. So that's the most important thing. Um, you know, I also, I, I want to get rid of a lot of the discretionary funds. I think it's, it's bad for Virginia, it's bad for the governor to be expected to shill for particular businesses. What happens is that creates the environment where people want to influence you, lobby, and that's why we have the gift scandal right now. Same thing with the Opportunity Fund. It's really easy for a, for a uh, politician to say, hey, you know what? I Look, I brought this company to Virginia. I'm such a great politician. We don't know the counterfactual. We don't know that they wouldn't have come to Virginia. And the fact of the matter is, a lot of companies would come to Virginia because we have a pretty good business environment compared to a lot of other states. But what... And... We also don't know, you know, that money comes from taxpayers that we're giving to these corporations. We don't, so we don't know the costs to families that, you know, businesses that don't get created, jobs that don't get created, family vacations that don't get taken because of the higher taxes. 